So I take it it's obvious that you do not agree with Philonus's conclusion. You think that not only they're objects, but that they're material substance, right? They're made of matter. And Philonus says, no, there's, there's objects, they're just not material. So you, you don't agree with Philonus, I take it. Now, maybe you do, but I, I seriously doubt it. <laughs> um, but the question is, you know, what's the general strategy that Philonus Barclay is going to take to reach this conclusion, right? What's his uh, overall and broad strokes? How does he think he's going to reach the conclusion and convince you too, by the way, because you know, Hylus is basically you, <laughs> uh, convince you that uh, material objects, material substance does not exist. Objects exist, but not material substance. Well, uh, you know, Hylus and Philon is kind of engaging almost like a bet, right? No, almost like a bet. So, you know, it starts off a Hylus saying, you know, or you kind of have to imagine this extravagant sort of talk, you know, speech. You were represented in last night's conversation as one who maintained the most extravagant opinion that ever entered into the mind of man, to wit, that there is no such thing as material substance in the world. So a little dramatic flourish there. All right, so, yeah, here's here on the, uh, excuse me, Hylus starting as like, Philonus, you are crazy. Philonus says, uh, that there is no such thing as what philosophers call material substance, I am seriously persuaded. But if I'm made to see anything absurd or skeptical in this, I should then have the same reason uh, to renounce this that I imagine I have now to reject the contrary opinion. So what Philonus is saying here is, uh, if you can show me that the belief that there's no material substance is either absurd, so results in some kind of bizarre contradiction, right? Or just something completely bizarre, apparently more bizarre than those no material substance or skepticism, right? Then he'll give up material substance. He'll give up the idea that there's no material substance. He'll say that there is material substance because he says by net right now, he says right now, the belief that there is material substance results in absurdity or skepticism or both. Right? So th this is, this is his point. Philonus is saying, the claim that there's material substance, that there's a guitar and it's made of matter, results in absurdity or skepticism or both. Uh, so Hylus does not respond well to this. What can be more fantastical, more repugnant to common sense, or a more manifest piece of skepticism than to believe there's no such thing as matter? <laughs> All right, so, to which Philonus says, softly good Hylus, which we should translate as, dude, chill. What if I should prove that you who hold there is, by virtue of that opinion, a greater skeptic and maintain more paradoxes and repugnances to common sense than I who believe no such thing? So here he's laying down the bet. My Philonus is laying down the bet. What if I show you that your belief results in contradictions and absurdities? You know, Hylus says, me, you may assume persuade me the part is greater than the whole as that, or in order to avoid absurdity and skepticism, I should ever be obliged to give up my opinion at this point. Halley says, no way. You can't do it. Feeling is, well then, are you content to admit that opinion for true, which upon examination shall appear most agreeable to common sense and remote from skepticism? Here he's laying down the bet. It's like we're going to have two competing theories. One that there's material substance and one there is not material substance. There's objects, right? But either it's material or it's not. And Feeling is, says, okay, which one? Well, we're going to figure out which one has more paradoxes, more repugnances of common sense, more skepticism. And the one that has less is the one we both have to agree on. And Hylas, with all my heart, <laughs> since you are for raising disputes about the plainest things in nature, I am content for once to hear what you have to say. <clears throat> now, it's probably worth mentioning, like, this is a very... It's huge egos, right? <laughs> huge egos in this dialogue. It's probably worth mentioning that, you know... The, the, there's one, at least one very prominent philosopher that wrote in this dialogue style, and that was Plato. And when Plato wrote Socrates, actually all the characters kind of had these huge egos, right? And Socrates was kind of a smart aleck <laughs> in a lot of it. And he would do this sort of thing a lot. Socrates would do this sort of thing a lot. Um, who knows whether that's how Socrates actually was, right? Um, we, don't, we don't really know. But uh, 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 Barclay here, I, th I think, is helping himself to Plato's style and writing out this dialogue. And that's fine, right? It, it, it's fun. It's amusing. Uh, but that's that's why, yeah, that, that's why there's this kind of dramatic style uh, to all of it. <clears throat> so this is the general strategy that Philonus is, is taking here. 
He's going to take the theory, he's going to take for granted, right? There are objects. Uh, take that for granted. And then uh, you take the theory that either the objects are material or they're not. And what he says is, look, we're going to compare these two, and whichever one has more repugnances to common sense, more absurdities, or results of skepticism, that's the one we have to give up. So he thinks that, you know, material substance has repugnances to common sense and results of skepticism, so we have to give it up and only take, only keep that theory that objects exist, they're just not material.